What does it mean to be a friend? Is technology your friend? I made friends with technology when I was a kid. This is me and Merlin. <laughs> My dad was involved in software. He loved gadgets, and we had the first IBM PC in the neighborhood. We had some great times playing games and learning to program little text adventures. I went on to discover a magical realm of software engineering and data science where we can build fantastic systems and products with merely our digits. But as the years have passed, I've begun to hear rumors. Rumors I don't want to believe. Things my friend supposedly does behind my back. People say it started innocently enough, forgetting what they just said or muttering cryptic replies. Sometimes it would lose track of stuff. Then it began to overwhelm us with irrelevant communication and even spread bogus news. <laughs> Worries surfaced it might exploit our personal data. Fear it could eavesdrop on our every word and out of the blue laugh at us. Some have grown tired of its stories of other people and their bigger, more perfect lives, like it wants us to be someone else. With all that's happened, there's concern for the future, that it may tire of us and use us for fuel. <laughs> what is happening? I want my friend back. We need an intervention. Some will say maybe we shouldn't rely so much on technology, but where do you draw the line? In search of the perfect word, you could pull out a paper dictionary or consult an app on your phone. What if you could converse naturally with a bot skilled in lexical nuance, helping you arrive at just the right term? Or ask an embedded sensor to follow your brainwaves and complete the sentence for you? Maybe you find all that too intrusive and long for simpler times. But how far do we dial back? Before the printing press or the advent of words? Is there a slippery slope in both directions? We really want technology to be this amazing friend. Alan Cooper has observed, we are inadvertently creating a divided society with a gulf between technology apologists and survivors. The apologists have paid a price to learn and use technology despite its inhumane interfaces. Survivors are eking by, learning just what they need. Cooper has been a champion for better experience design and has called for polite software with specific attributes. I think he's onto something. Our technology lacks soul, but it doesn't have to. The Greeks recognized in the soul the presence of life, cognition, and emotional response. It was the bearer of virtues like courage, temperance, and justice. Plato described the tripartite soul consisting of reason, spirit, and appetite. What if we made a world where technology was built to be a better friend? Remember, it is only what we teach it to be. How will we give it more soul? We can build soulful technology that pays attention, has your back, and elevates the moment. In other words, the products we build should be attentive, loyal, and inspiring. A friend pays attention. Our virtual assistants are always willing and sometimes helpful. Unlike friends, they don't yet intuitively track the context of the conversation or recall relevant experiences. We need to equip our conversational bots to go beyond a few shallow turns of dialogue. We want our software to get to know us gracefully, using language we understand without exhaustive questions. We want it to be a wiser friend, pointing out things we may have missed and being helpful in our decisions. Couldn't it make better use of data, predictions, and appraisals that weigh our values and allow us to see alternative paths? Helping us save recipes that look appetizing is a great start, but our software is too pinned down. As a virtual friend in the kitchen, a more attentive application could point out a great dish your friends like, 
assemble a meal plan from your saved recipes, and order the groceries for you. Then remind you to defrost the chicken for tonight and guide you through the recipe. A friend has your back. By valuing your well-being, products are better positioned for a sustainable relationship. Who wants a total user friend? We've all heard examples of bad habits related to technology, whether a product exploits our insecurities and addictive tendencies or fails to help us keep a healthy balance. Thankfully, habits come in two flavors, and enterprising app developers have created life overlays, like a video game to level up your good habits. We sometimes suffer from unscrupulous or one-sided use of data, yet data can be powerful in the hands of a more loyal companion. In recent news, Adam Love, a 24-year-old college student in Australia, was alarmed when his Apple Watch detected his sleeping heart rate was twice the norm. Doctors discovered he had been living with a hole in his heart since birth. Adam's heart surgery was aided by a Da Vinci 3D robot, which promises to shorten his recovery and allow him to return to his studies in robotics. With human experts and machines working together, more is possible. In between visits to the doctor, what if biosensors and an AI-assisted health coach helped you make small adjustments in the many mundane moments where health battles are won? A friend elevates the moment. Friends make our peak experiences more enjoyable. Technology can celebrate with us, too. Designing for surprise, delight, and encouragement goes beyond a congratulatory badge. During the busy preparations for a wedding, could a virtual assistant quietly gather favorite memories from the bridesmaids and collect a personal video message from a relative overseas? Then could it guide the guests in curating a live slideshow and contributing their advice to the newlyweds? Building for empathy is a worthy goal, and progress has been made in detecting mood from facial expression, biosensing, and language. A great friend knows intuitively when to be quiet and can handle being told to just shut up. <laughs> Technology should be taught that too. Nothing suggests all of this will be easy. Along the way, there will be mistakes. Five steps forward, two steps back. Isn't that part of being human? Even our most loyal friends make honest mistakes. This is different than taking advantage or being neglectful. A friend might even crash your car, but should care enough not to take the wheel if they realize they aren't fit to drive. More human technology should be allowed to make some honest mistakes, but it should recognize fault, try to set things right, and seek to do better. Things that come naturally to us as humans will continue to take effort to teach our machines. We've spent a lot of energy teaching people computer literacy. Now is the time to teach our computers people literacy. <laughs> Advances in algorithms, biosensors, and artificial intelligence will help. The defense agency DARPA describes three waves of AI. In the first, Machines were taught handcrafted knowledge in various domains. They learned rules and if-then logic from human experts. This approach is still very powerful and drives many of the world's systems today, from tax preparation software to medical information systems or games on your phone. More recently, the second wave was fueled by faster hardware and layered math driving statistical learning. Deep learning has leapt forward with astonishing results in certain kinds of tasks. Given enough data, we see it recognizing faces, navigating around obstacles, or finding interesting relationships in natural language. Yet something is missing. In the third wave to come, can symbolic logic from domain experts and powerful computational learning come together in contextual models that approximate more human-like common sense? If so, we can better equip our software for empathy. We can thus help our friend become more and allow it to return the favor. These are my brothers, Neil and Brian. 
Like me, they discovered digital friends and grew up to be technologists. We love brainstorming about what we could create. Unfortunately, Brian is no longer with us. One Sunday morning at home in Ohio, his wife was at work and he had finished getting their three little girls ready for church. He wasn't feeling well. Reaching out for help from technology, he Googled migraine. That was moments before a sudden brain hemorrhage took him from our world at age 32. We'll always miss Brian. And while I wouldn't have expected technology then or now to be able to prevent this from happening, I do wonder, at some point in the future, could soulful technology, being attentive and loyal, have noticed something? Could it have inspired action, helping a man live to see his children grow up? Now, my son is about the age I was when I made friends with tech. He's starting to tinker. What will his generation create and experience? Let's show them how to use our amazing resources to build more soulful creations we can be proud to call friends. Imagine the world where technology apologists and survivors become makers and explorers. We are in a pivotal moment. In the Homeric poems, mention of the soul seemed reserved for times of peril, suggesting risk of death. From the Iliad, Mars went about among the ranks of the Trojans, cheering them on. Sons of Priam, said he, how long will you let your people be thus slaughtered by the Achaeans? Will you wait till they are at the walls of Troy? Come then, help me rescue our brave comrade from the stress of the fight. With these words, he put heart and soul into them all. Today, I have called into question the soul of my friend, technology. As makers, let's breathe life and love back into our digital creations. As explorers, let's unfriend zombie products and take up with those worthy of our friendship. Thank you. <laughs>